hopefully God will help us and we'll be able to retain the connection. Uh, yeah. So uh, we were actually reflecting upon um, 2 Peter 1 verses 3 to 4 uh, when we kind of lost the connection. Uh, but yeah, so in 2 Peter 1, 3 to 4, uh, we saw that God's divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life. And in verse 4, we see we have been given great and precious promises. Why have these promises been given to us? So that we may participate in the divine nature. So we no longer need to participate in, the, in our old sinful nature. We can instead choose to participate in God's divine nature and live a godly life because his divine power, his resurrection power has been imparted to us you know, to live in godliness. So um, because these things have been done for us, uh, therefore, Ephesians 4.24, um, if someone could read out Ephesians 4.24, please. Pastor, could you repeat the reference again, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ephesians 4 24. Ephesians 4 24. Ephesians 4 24. And that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Yeah, so because we have been given this divine power uh, to live a godly life. Because now, you know, through the great and precious promises given to us, because we are now we can participate in the divine nature because of all of these things, we must now make a conscious choice. On a daily basis, I must choose uh, to either, uh, you know, living in my old nature, you know, something that I am not even, I'm not even that person anymore. I am now a new creation. But I can still choose, you know, because I still have an unre unrenewed mind. I can you know, follow that unrenewed mind and choose to start living in that old lifestyle. Or, you know, it's like it says here in Ephesians 4.24, I can choose to put on the new self created to be like God. Uh, so on a daily basis, uh, uh, the fact is there. Okay, The basic facts are established. I can now participate in the divine nature. I am a new creation. I have been given great promises. Uh, I have been uh, given everything that I need to live a godly life. Uh, I've been given the divine power, you know, God's own resurrection power to live in this new lifestyle. So those are all established facts. But on a basis, on a, on a daily basis, I need to make a conscious choice and say, okay, because all of these spiritual things are now available to me, I will choose today to put on the new self and, and you know, live uh, in a way that pleases God. So we have to consciously make that choice. Otherwise, we'll go back to our, you know, unrenewed thinking. We'll go back to the way we used to live earlier. And um, that will lead, you know, lead to only defeat. So it says over here in Ephesians 4.24 that every day I will actually have to make a conscious choice all over again and say, today, I choose to put on the new self. It's like, you know, it's like a, a robe that you're putting on. So you make a make a conscious choice to either walk around, you know, in, in the way that you were earlier or put on this new robe. You know, you, you choose to be this new self that you are now, that, you know, that God has made you to be. You choose to be like the new creation that uh, you are supposed to be. So it's a conscious choice that we make on a, daily basis. So point one uh, of how to uh, overcome the flesh is you understand the privilege that has been given to you. You understand uh, the new rights that you have as a new creation. Having understood your divine status, you now choose to walk in that status. You choose to put on what you are now rather than living as that as the person that you were earlier. You choose to put on this new self and live you know, in, in, in this new status. The second um, practical uh, thing that we can do to overcome the flesh is uh, we choose to use the word 
you know the word of god in relation to that specific area of weakness uh, so um, you know uh, it says in psalm 119 verse 9 it says how can a young person stay on the path of purity by living according to your word so on a daily basis uh, we would choose to wash our mind uh, you know of the sinful desires so we take the word of god regarding that particular area of temptation and you know wash and renew our minds in that particular area for instance if you will if you were dealing with a person who has a tendency to lie um they they tell lies to escape out of situations so if i am that person uh, what would i do i would look at scriptures which talk about uh, lying uh, which talk about overcoming lies i would use those specific scriptures to start washing my mind in that particular area so that my mind starts thinking about lies the way god thinks about them uh, i would start applying those um, you know methods of overcoming uh, which are recommended by god so uh, i would take the word of god and wash the wrong thoughts which are there you know regarding that particular issue and you know uh, correct myself so this is something that we do so how do how does a person stay on the path of purity by living according to your word um, so you know to to continue with this example of lying Uh, which has been used in your notes um first of all we would have to understand what the scripture says about lying because you know the world has uh, has its own um, you know uh, perspective on lying the world considers lying as an acceptable option to get out of trouble they uh, the world looks at lying as an acceptable option you know when you're a good person and you're trying to live a good life no harm in telling a few lies because um this world is tough and uh, you can't always i know uh, what the world would say is you can't hold on to ideal principles you know so they would say it's all right to compromise now that is what world says and what did paul say about such people he said you are worldly you're thinking like mere you're thinking like mere human beings but you people are not mere human beings now you are a new creation you are uh, you you are now meant to participate in the divine nature uh, so you uh, and yeah like, like we saw in ephesians 4 uh, you have been uh, uh, you know created to be like god so these are the scriptural truths about us now so we can't be like the world and say oh yeah lying is an option and it's not very bad thing we cannot adopt that attitude because now we belong to a different kingdom uh, we are following a different you know set of principles so that is something that we would first have to establish very very clearly in our mind so we would look at scriptures which talk about that so um in your notes you know um, uh, we have proverbs 6 16 to 17 uh, if someone could read out proverbs 6 16 to 17 please Proverbs six sixteen to seventeen. These yeah. six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to Him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood. So here, not only does it say that the Lord hates these things, it says that they are an abomination in His eyes. I mean, that's the seriousness of it. So among the things listed over here is a lying tongue. So first of all we need to accept the fact that we cannot look at lying the way the world looks at it the world looks at us looks at it as this harmless thing but no in god's eyes it is an abomination you know niv says that it is detestable to him he cannot stand it he finds it repulsive uh, so um, which is why you know in proverbs 8 7 
uh, you know, the, the person who is writing that proverb, he says, my mouth speaks what is true for my lips detest wickedness. So this a person who wrote this proverb is adopting the same attitude that God has. In the same way God detests uh, lying, this person is saying, I too choose to detest lying. So that is at the very fundamental you know, root of dealing with this, uh, with this area of sin. So whatever that area of you know, uh, sin and temptation that uh, we are struggling with, First of all, we need to establish the fact, what is God's attitude regarding this? How does he see this? And once I am aware of what God says about this particular you know, sin and this particular temptation, I choose to adopt the same attitude that he has. So if he says, I detest this thing, then I choose to say, yes, I too will you know, detest this thing. So. Um, if we continue to maintain an attitude of love towards that particular you know, temptation, um, then uh, it's not going to work. Again and again, we will fall. Because why? We are allowing ourselves to like it, like that sinful thing. We are thinking of it in a favorable manner. So if you're thinking of something in a favorable manner and you're not trying to change your thinking about that, obviously, you will fall into, the, into that particular temptation. So uh, the very first step that we we you know we would need to take is uh, we make a choice and we say in the same way God you know detests this particular thing I too choose to detest this particular thing. Uh, another thing, uh, what are what what are the scriptures saying about this particular sin? Uh, what are the consequences? Um, what are the benefits of obeying God rather than giving in to this this to this particular kind of temptation? Um, one verse that would uh, you know um, throw light on this would be proverbs uh, 12 19 uh, if someone could please read out proverbs 12 19 proverbs 12 19 the truthful lip shall be established forever but a lying tongue is but for a moment yeah, you know, uh, so a lying tongue is but for a moment. Um, you may gain some temporary benefit from lying. Um, and uh, it may, in fact, um, help you to, you know, go forward, you know, get promoted maybe in some way uh, because you have lied. But it's so temporal. It is so temporary. Uh, it does not last. On the other hand, what happens to the truthful lip? It says the truthful lip shall be established forever. So we would, you know, have to tell our mind, educate our mind and tell it, you know what? If you lie, um, you may gain. But what you have gained is so temporary. It is just for a moment. On the other hand, if you choose to stand on the truth and, you know, uh, refuse to lie, it says that uh, you will be established forever. Uh, so, so not only are you uh, warning your mind about the dangers, you're also teaching your mind about the benefits of honoring God. You know, you, you, you're, you're drawing attention to the fact of what can be gained, what eternal benefits can be reaped by uh, following what you know, God is asking us to do. So in this way, uh, we choose to uh, teach ourselves what the truth is. Uh, because how does a person uh, keep himself on the path of purity? By living according to the word. Um, now, and I know Ephesians 4.24, which we read earlier. Um, in fact, even that verse actually talks about, um, you know, giving up lying. Uh, so if, if, you know, if someone could read out Ephesians 4.24 and 25. Ephesians 4.24 and 25. Ephesians 4, 24 and 25, and that you put on the new man, which is created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. 
you know another thing that we get to know about you know this whole thing of lying uh, it says over here you must you know uh, put on the new self you must put off lying uh, so you know it, it we can apply this to absolutely any area of sin so you know whatever that area of sin and temptation is we choose to put it off and instead in its place we choose to put on god's nature you know we we choose to put on this new self that has been given to us so we take off something we put off something and we put on something else that god i know honors and uh, one in, in important thing that comes out over here uh, is it says uh, we are all members of one body so when you are lying you know to uh, fellow believers uh, you are in fact harming the body of christ so it's like um, the hand deliberately conspiring against the foot and you know harming it um, it's basically a uh, you know doing harm to your own body so we all are part of the body of christ and he has trusted us to be reliable members of his body so we cannot betray him by attacking one another we are literally attacking the very body of christ and uh, so you know we might never really have thought about lie lying as something that serious but over here it's talking about how lies um uh, is is something that we that we uh, that will harm the very body of christ you know the the one who uh, died on the cross for this body uh, the one who has now given great promises of you know kingship and priestly status to this body uh, we are attacking that body of christ so so uh, what we are basically doing is we look at the scriptures dealing with that particular area of sin and we see what the scripture saying about this particular sin and so even as we start looking at the scriptures we start discovering a whole bunch of truths about this area you know that we are struggling with and when we start understanding these things the power of god's word begins to work in our hearts we feel convicted we start feeling this deep desire to do what god what what honors god and we also begin to realize how serious this particular sin is because till then we might we might have had a worldly understanding of that sin where the world is like ah it's not such a big thing it's not really bad but now when we start looking at the scriptures and start looking at the truth of what the scriptures are saying about this terrible thing it begins to dawn on us how serious it is and what are the spiritual implications of what we are indulging in so everything in our in our you know inner being starts hating this thing and we start thinking about this particular thing the way god thinks about it so at a very fundamental level our very perspective about this thing starts changing so what are we actually doing we are washing our mind with the word of god in this particular area you know in uh, with regard to this particular challenge and also when we are looking at scriptures regarding that particular sin you know there would be there would be bible verses that we would find which we can literally pray over ourselves and uh, again this example is you know given in your notes so we have a couple of verses which talk about you know two prayers that can be prayed for a person who has the who is struggling with this habitual sin of lying um so the first one is psalm 19 verse 14 if someone could read out psalm 19:14 that's 19 verse 14 let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight o lord my strength and my redeemer so you know you would just go to the lord and say lord you are my strength you are my redeemer on my own i can never overcome this particular temptation so i'm coming to you my my strength and my redeemer and i'm asking you you cause the words of my mouth to be pleasing in your sight you enable me you help me because that was what was promised to us right uh, where it says over there in uh, in in that other passage where it says that even as we uh, you know choose to um, walk according to the spirit the righteous requirements of the law will be fulfilled by us in Jesus Christ so um, so uh, so 
So God will do this for us. And so we can pray these scriptures over our lives. We can claim what is being uh, you know, promised in these scriptures and say, Lord, you do this for me. In the same way, there's this other verse, uh, Psalm 141, verse 3, you know, where uh, that person is actually asking and saying, Lord, set a guard over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lip. So, you know, um, I so carelessly and so easily lie, oh Lord. Uh, but then if you can, you know, set a guard over my mouth so that each time I open my mouth to, you know, say something, uh, 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 tell, tell a false thing and try to escape, immediately you who are on guard will warn me and say, no, no, don't do that. No, there is a righteous way of dealing with this. So don't, don't give in to the temptation and sin. So Lord, set a guard over my mouth. Be that one who will warn me every time I know I'm, I'm so uh, every time I'm, I'm, I'm about to, you know, uh, commit that sin. So all of these prayers, we literally pray these scriptures over our mind and over our body and we choose to overcome. The second example that is given in your notes is uh, on sexual immorality. So maybe we can even look at, you know, uh, scriptures that deal with that. Um, you have first Corinthians chapter six verses 13 to 20 mentioned. It's a rather lengthy passage, uh, but just to know, kind of look at some uh, things which are highlighted in this passage, first Corinthians six, 13 to 20. Um, uh, it, it says, um, the body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord. And then in verse 14, it says, by his power, God raised the Lord from the dead and he will raise us also. And then in verse 15, it says, do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? Um, maybe we could have someone just read out verses 17 to 20. First uh, Corinthians 6. Uh, verses 17 to 20, Yeah, if someone could read out 1 Corinthians chapter 6, uh, verses 17 to 20. First Corinthians 6, 17 to 20. Yeah. But he who joins himself to the Lord becomes spiritually one with him. Avoid immorality. Any other sin a man commits doesn't affect his body. But the man who is guilty of sexual immorality sins against his own body. Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and who was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself, but to God. He bought you for a price. So use your bodies for God's glory. Amen. Okay, so these are very fundamental things that we first start teaching ourselves. You know, what does the scripture have to say regarding this particular sin? Uh, so I cannot just be like the world, you know, which says, oh, this life is my life. I can do with it as I wish. Uh, now, actually, that's a falsehood. They are under the impression that their life is their own life. But actually, the thing is, they are slaves of sin. Sin has taken over their life. So actually, they're not getting to do what they wish. Sin tells them what to do. You know, they don't realize it. So actually, the, but at least, you know, as far as they are concerned, they, 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 they say to themselves, oh, this is my life. I will do as I wish. Um, but us believers, we have to understand this basic fact that we were bought out of slavery to sin. So Jesus Christ purchased us. Now he owns us. Now because we are his property, we must live in a way that God wants. And that is why it says in verse 13, you know, it says, the body, however, is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord. He purchased it. So this body of yours is 
for the Lord, for the purposes of the Lord, for uh, whatever he wants from it. It is not for you to do it as you wish. OK, so this is one fundamental thing that we, we teach ourselves and we recognize that uh, we cannot just be like the world and say, oh, this is my life. No, it's not my life. Um, uh, for, for the unbeliever, it is, you know, he, his life is uh, belongs to sin. And for us believers, my life belongs to uh, Jesus. Uh, so the second thing that we recognize is that um, uh, uh, verse 17, it says, whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. So spiritually, I am united with the Lord. This is something that Jesus Christ did for me at the moment of salvation. I came into union with him. You know, I got united with Jesus in that moment. So because I'm united with him, now whatever I, uh, um, uh, so now because I'm united with him, he uses my physical body to accomplish his purposes. You know, so uh, my hands and feet are, are used by the Lord to do what honors him. So because of my union, of my spiritual union with Christ, uh, this physical body of mine is also now at his disposal. So when I choose to use this physical body of mine for something uh, immoral, I'm actually, uh, you know, um, going against this spiritual union that I have with him. So I need to f understand the seriousness of, of what I am doing. Uh, uh, something that has now been united with the Lord is being deliberately, rebelliously taken and being used for other purposes. No, you know, that's not something that I can take lightly. So I, I choose to, you know, recognize this fact. And the third amazing thing that is talked about over here, uh, you know, it talks about how uh, this body of ours uh, will be raised up by the Lord. Uh, it, it says in uh, verse 14, it says, by his power, God raised the Lord from the dead and he will raise us also. My physical body is so important to the Lord that one day, you know, long after it has been put in the grave and it has, you know, um, completely got mixed up with the soil and it has gone back into, you know, uh, into the form of minerals and whatever, uh, God will take that, that dust and he will recreate it into a resurrected body. So my physical body is actually that important in God's eyes. So I cannot just do with it as I wish. In his eyes, my physical body is that important to him. Because there's this uh, vague idea that people have, OK, what my spirit is important. My body, what to say, what I do with the body? The body is here today, gone tomorrow. No, it's not gone tomorrow. It's going to be resurrected. You know, like it says in, in Revelation, the unbelievers, their bodies will be resurrected to go into eternal uh, punishment into hell. On the other hand, the believers, their bodies will be resurrected to enjoy the uh, uh, you know, eternal benefits of being in God's presence. So uh, the body is that important. So I cannot say, oh, what I do with my body is not very important. No, it is absolutely vital. So even as we meditate on scriptures which talk about this particular area of sin, we start realizing the seriousness of what is involved. Uh, so in this way, we start aligning our thinking uh, with, 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 you know, with what God has to say regarding you know, that particular issue. Um, and then um, maybe if we could have someone read out uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, 3 to 8. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, 3 to 8. I, the the volume was not very clear, but you know, thanks a lot. Uh, no, 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 no problem. 
the thing is, if someone else reads it, it gives me a chance to kind of rest my throat. Otherwise, it starts hurting. So that's basically one of the reasons why I ask someone to read. Um, I, so you know, uh, here in this passage, uh, something very important is being said. Uh, it says in verse eight, anyone who rejects this instruction does not reject a human being, but God, the very God who gives you His Holy Spirit. So um, the instructions given over here are not something to be taken lightly. It says, if you're going to be ignoring this instruction, you're not just rejecting some human's instruction. You're literally rejecting God himself who gave this instruction. So what are these instruction that, the instructions that he gives over here in this passage? He says um, that it is God's will that you should be sanctified. And as we are familiar, the word sanctified just literally means set apart. You're, you're, you're set apart for God. So it is God's will that you should be set apart for what he wants. You can't just set yourself apart for whatever you wish, whatever you desire. No, you have been set apart for what he wants. And um, it says um, that we have been, you know, um, yeah, you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honorable. So, you know, we have been called to a holy and honorable life. Um, and it says in verse 7, it says, did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. So um, it was his will that we should be set apart for a holy and honorable life. We were set apart to live uh, not in impurity, but in holiness and um, because we have been set apart like this what are we being asked to do we're being told control your body rather than allowing it to go in whichever direction it wishes to we would have to assert ourselves and control our body and say no you are going to go in a way in in the way that god wishes you to go because you have been set apart for him so we would have to consciously control our body and say, no, you need to go in the direction that God is, God, God wants you to go. And um, then um, uh, it also says in verse 6, it says, and that in this matter, no one should wrong or take advantage of a brother or sister. So um, uh, we have to be careful because we have been set apart. We can't lead someone else into temptation. Um, you know, it's very easy to say, oh, that person may, may you, know, uh, you know, they tempted me. Uh, so it's actually the, the, you know, the fault is, the blame is upon them. So, and um, probably women would do, you know, use that excuse. Oh, that man, you know, he tempted me. It's, it, I, I'm just this, you know, very innocent person, but he tempted me. But actually, what are you doing? By saying yes, you are uh, leading, you know, uh, that person into that temptation. You know, it's like, you know, um, Adam, he, he said, oh, she made me eat the fruit. No, but then, you know, no one was forcing him, right? By participating in that, he encouraged what she was doing. So um, no person, you know, so so when you when uh, as in, the, you know, in, the, in this area of sexual immorality, uh, you are actually taking advantage of the other person, even though you may say, you know, it's the other person's fault, the other person's blame. The fact remains that by, by saying yes, you are actually taking advantage of that person and you are, you know, encouraging them to sin. So we, 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 we look at all the things which this passage is saying about this sinful act and we understand the seriousness of it. And very, very plainly, it says in verse eight, 6, it says, the Lord will punish all those who commit such sins because i uh, you know uh the unrenewed mind will say to us oh nothing will happen i'm going to escape from this you know nobody will even know and it's it's, it's just going to happen this one single time so no it, nothing bad will happen so satan will be you know uh, feeding all these lies into your mind but what does scripture say scripture says so plainly the lord will punish all those who commit such sins as we told you and warned you before okay so um so we choose to believe 
what the scriptures are saying regarding this sin and no and uh, so we look at all the scriptures which talk about this area and uh, we speak these scriptures over our lives uh, and and we take those scriptures and turn them into a prayer and we pray his word to him and say lord please make these things happen in my life lord you help me to control my body so uh, these are all things that we you know choose to do so uh, the same thing you know in in your notes i mean there's, there's a long list of uh, uh, you know um, sins of the flesh that we can apply scripture to so it talks about anger and addictions and backbiting and jealousy and hatred and greed and uh, so we can take the um, so we would have to you know sit down with us with the word of god and look okay so if, you know if my my area is hatred where i am unable to forgive someone so i actually sit down and look at all the scriptures which talk about hatred it can be something as simple as typing the word you know uh, into google scriptures which talk about hatred that's it you know it it at least give you maybe two or three websites you know which will contain a list of verses about hatred you could get started with that and meditate upon each of those verses and see what does god actually think about hatred uh, what does god say will be the consequences of living in hatred so you start you know start aligning your mind with the way god thinks about it and uh, then you begin to realize how hateful and dangerous and horrible hatred is and then you say no 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 i want to i long to live uh, the way god wants me to i want to live in love rather than hate so that's so that desire that godly desire starts arising in your heart and then you start praying the scriptures over your verse and saying oh lord i cannot do this by myself but lord this particular scripture which has touched my heart oh lord you please help the scripture to be fulfilled in my life so even as i even as i cooperate with you um lord you enable this to happen for me so this these are all things that we do in this way we choose to use uh, the word of god uh, to you know overcome this specific area of uh, you know fleshly temptation that we are facing uh, now the third point in your in your notes on how to overcome the flesh um, that is basically you know walking in the spirit and crucifying the flesh now again this is something that you know we are familiar with see these are all things that we have uh, touched upon uh, but um, every time we touched upon these uh, you know um, uh, this familiar instructions we try to bring out some new new learning you know some some new aspect which we have not looked at earlier so um, galatians 5:16 is basically what talks about you know walking in the spirit um, so uh, so galatians 5:16 it says so i say walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh um so what exactly is walking by the spirit uh, we see that in romans 8:13 if someone could read out uh, romans 8:13 Romans eight thirteen. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you, but if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Amen. Yes. So how do we walk by the spirit? Um, we walk by the spirit by putting to death the misdeeds of the body. This is how we actually uh, put fleshly desires to death. so if you have this godly desire this godly ambition to kill all the ungodly desires in your flesh and mind how are you going to do that you're going to put to death the misdeeds of the body and it basically means three things and by the way you're doing this how by the spirit it's not something that you can do on your own this is something that the holy spirit will empower and enable you to do even as you you know rely upon him even as you call out to him and ask him to help you so by the spirit you will put to death the misdeeds of the poor body and it just basically involves three things uh, uh, that is not explained in your notes uh, but you know it's very helpful to know at a practical level how on earth do i put to death the misdeeds of the body these three things um, first you choose to judge that particular misdeed of the body and declare and say i acknowledge the fact that this is a sinful thing 
you know so that is where it all starts right you first begin by acknowledging the fact that the world may say that this is not not a very serious thing not a very harmful thing but you choose to look at scriptures and say oh this is what scripture is saying about this particular you know misdeed of the body this particular fleshly desire this is what scripture is saying about it and i choose to accept what scripture is saying about this particular sinful thing and declare and say yes this is a sin it's not just a compromise it's not just something that i an, an adjustment that i have to do to be able to survive in this world no scripture is calling this a sin and so i choose first of all to judge it and declare and say this is a sinful thing that my mind and body is asking me to do it's not a good thing it is a sinful thing the second thing you know uh, like we saw we choose to hate it the same way the lord hates it so rather than you know continuing continuing to allow myself to think favorable thoughts regarding that you know oh lying is so convenient you know yeah it has its own advantages and oh yeah the world is like such a tough place you can't always be upright in a world you know i mean if you were living in a heavenly system uh, then you no know, we can apply heavenly principles but no no we are living here in the world so i need to live um, in a way which uh, you know the which which works over here in the worldly system so we can say all of these thing nice things to ourselves and as we are doing that our mind starts being controlled being governed by that fleshly desire of you know using lies as an escape route so no i come against all of these thoughts and i choose to say in the same way the lord detests this i too you know like it says in that proverbs you know it says i too my lips will will detest wickedness you know so i make a conscious choice to start hating it and if i'm not feeling any hatred towards that sin i will get down on my knees and say oh lord only you can put this divine hatred birth in me a deep divine hatred and revulsion towards this thing oh lord help me to see it the way you see it through your godly holy eyes so we choose to judge it and acknowledge that it is a sin second we choose to hate it the same way god hates it and we do this by the power of the holy spirit the third thing is you know we plainly say no i refuse to practice it so you know rather than considering it rather than thinking okay how maybe to, to maybe to some extent maybe i can do it and maybe to some extent you know i can be godly no so we outright say no no compromise i refuse to do it uh, so when we make that choice on a daily basis the holy spirit gives us the power to actually go through you know with our decision and not practice it so he helps us so we say no no way i'm going to practice it so by doing these three little you know three very very simple things by judging it hating it by just absolutely refusing to practice it by just, you know simply saying no and walking away uh, by doing this in this manner on a daily basis we put to death the misdeeds of the body okay so um another thing that we need to keep in mind is the importance of prayer i mean prayer makes a big difference okay um we don't seem to have much time um let's see uh, what else we can deal with mm. okay yeah there are uh, other things that we can talk about so we will uh, you know yeah we'll cover whatever we can today and continue uh, next class as well so next class we will continue with this you know overcoming the flesh and of course we will also look at the other uh, two things uh, to the extent possible so um, yeah in the time that we have left let's just very quickly look at the importance of prayer in overcoming the flesh um, you know we are all very familiar with this very important scripture uh, regarding prayer so if someone could read out matthew chapter 26 verse 41 matthew 26:41 matthew 26:41 watch and pray lest you enter into temptation the spirit indeed is willing but the flesh is weak okay so over here 
why should we watch and pray uh, so that we will not fall into temptation why should we watch and pray because the flesh is weak um it 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 cannot handle temptation just like that on its own in its own strength it needs prayer back up to be able to overcome uh, otherwise you will end up falling so therefore because your flesh is weak you need to watch and pray now over here in this particular verse when it's talking about the flesh it's not talking about sinful flesh it's just talking about humanness you know a human frailty a human weakness in the sense we are limited in our strength in our uh, in our ability um we are we are not uh, uh, super strong like god you no know, our humanness has limitations uh, we are weak in that sense so uh, our humanness requires divine enabling it requires divine power to be able to do divine things so this is something that even jesus christ experienced when he became human he didn't become partially human he became 100% human so he continued to be 100% divine he never lost that but he chose to operate humble himself and operate in his 100% humanness he never used any of his uh, divine uh, powers no so he needed prayer as badly as anyone any any one of us so why did he spend so much time in prayer he understood the limitations of his flesh his flesh in you know in a positive sense the word over here i'm not using this word as uh, as a sinful thing just humanness jesus understood that his humanness has got limitations there's some there are there are divine things which it will it will not be able to do on its own if the if the pressure gets bad enough this poor flesh this human thing will fail it will back off it will be unable to bear it and it will just back off so in that vital moment you should not back off in that vital moment you should be able to go through and and succeed and gain victory it's so important so how you need to start praying beforehand and start preparing yourself in prayer so that when the time of attack comes your humanness will not be the weak point which will make you lose in that moment your humanness should not back off and say no this is not something i can bear you should be able to stand firm so for that to happen you need to equip yourself in prayer so that is why prayer is so important jesus understood this and we especially see this in the garden of gethsemane because jesus understood left to itself his humanness would not be able to go through the process when that vital moment came along you know he would just back off he knew that would happen if he just relied on his humanness so what did he do he connected to god and he also asked his disciples to do the same thing he told them you know this is dangerous you guys just sitting over here you need to start preparing yourself so in the same way i am preparing myself you know in prayer you also need to prepare yourself in prayer so in this entire getsemane passage passage we see the importance of prayer because the flesh the humanness is is limited we don't it, it can only do human things it cannot do this divine things that are being asked of it on its own uh, for that you need to get connected with god through prayer and even as you do that you know he strengthens us uh, so this is such an important thing to uh, remember um, you know we only have a few minutes left but there are so many important things that can be said about this because most of us don't realize it we think you know prayer is just something that we do as a uh, it's a nice thing um but it's so vital and we see that especially here in this passage um not sure that we have the time to actually get into all of that uh, so all right you know maybe we can you know um, start off with this point you know next class and uh, look at the importance of prayer because the what we discuss regarding this prayer is not just going to apply to overcoming the flesh it will also apply to overcoming the devil and the world okay? so uh, uh, this is a very vital teaching that we would be requiring uh, so we would uh, yeah we'll continue in the next class uh, so uh, for now because we are out of time i know we'll close with prayer you know all of those uh, those of you who really helped you know in reading out the verses thank you so much uh, because it 
kind of you know gives my gives me a chance to relax my throat a bit if someone else is reading out the verses so thanks a lot for that and let's you know let's quickly close with a word of prayer thank you so much a lot for all the important things that we could learn today um, in our session so we pray oh lord that even as uh, we are attacked uh, by fleshly desires in our mind and our body uh, for different uh, people it's different um, different areas of weakness that we have but lord the scriptural uh, instructions and principles are the same if we can just follow the methods that you are giving us if we can just follow uh, the tactics that you have given us in overcoming these things we will be able to succeed why because we have been given great promises by you so that we can participate in your divine nature we don't need to live the way we used to be before we now have a choice so we pray oh lord that you would help us to remember these things that we have learned and you would help us to apply these things um on a daily basis oh lord uh, because we do have a longing in our hearts uh, to honor you uh, to really um, uh, somehow try to express our gratitude for all that you have done for us so help us a lot help us to 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 walk by your power um uh, in step with your spirit follow your leading rather than listening to the cry of our flesh and and unrenewed mind help us a lot uh, to overcome uh, in this whole area of fleshly desires and really be conquerors who will honor you thank you lord in jesus name Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, so we will continue uh, in the next class. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you.